When I turned 10, I was finally allowed to own a pen. At school, that was when we moved from pencils to ink, and our parents were told to get us all new stationery. That was also the year we learned to write in cursive because we were finally big kids and cursive writing meant we could sign checks, I guess. I don't know about kids these days, but physically writing notes in pen and paper is a huge part of how I learn things and organize my thoughts. It probably had something to do with the fact that my mom trained my brother and I to use mind maps as study tools too. When I start planning a trip or a big project, I instinctively reach for a notepad and a pen. That's why writing on a tablet that mimics this experience holds so much appeal for me and uh, probably a lot of people around my age or older. Though you can get a decent stylus experience on an iPad, Surface, or Galaxy phone, e-ink tablets typically last a lot longer and offer a more paper-like reading experience with no glare or blue light hurting your eyes. They also typically don't come with distracting apps or notifications to interrupt your work. So, when Amazon announced the Kindle Scribe would be its first e-reader that also supports stylus input, I was intrigued. The Kindle series are probably the most popular e-ink readers in the US, and they could make digital note-taking much more accessible to a mainstream audience. At $340 to start, you'll get a bigger 10.2-inch screen with the same 300 ppi pixel density, a front light with 35 LEDs, an included basic pen, and at least 16 gigs of storage. You can sync your notes to the Kindle app to view them without the tablet. But while e-readers never fully replace books, the Scribe might just offer a better experience than an actual pen and notepad. Like most Kindles, the Scribe is marvelously thin and light. At just 0.22 inches thick, this is one of the slimmest e-readers around, and I actually worried it might break when I left it in the flimsy purse that I threw into an overhead compartment during a Thanksgiving flight to San Francisco. Luckily, with the case that Amazon sent along, the Scribe not only survived being tossed around with heavy suitcases, it also held up when I accidentally sat on it. More importantly, at just 433 grams, or 0.95 pounds, the Scribe was light enough for long periods of reading. It's just a hair lighter than the M1 iPad Air, which weighs 1.02 pounds. And thanks to a generous bezel on the long side, the Scribe is easy to hold with one hand without accidentally triggering the touchscreen. Because the display rotates to all orientations, you can use this with your right or left hand. Unlike the Oasis or some e-reader models by Kobo, the Scribe doesn't have physical buttons for page turning. There's just a single power button on the edge next to the USB-C charging socket. In many ways, the Scribe offers a better experience than actual pen and paper. I never run out of paper or ink or have to sharpen a pencil. Erasing my mistakes is effortless. I don't even have to deal with cleaning up the razor dust. And I never end up with ink or lead stains on my hands. Amazon's palm rejection here is almost perfect. Other than like one or two times when I dragged my palm across the screen, which turned the page. That didn't happen often enough to be annoying, but I also learned not to move my palm when I had it touching the display. I love the sheer smoothness of writing on the scribe. The latency is nearly zero, and the instant I placed the nib on the screen, it left a mark. Thanks to the screen's matte finish and the responsiveness of both the display and the stylus, drawing on the scribe felt just as natural as the real thing. The premium pen that Amazon sent with our review unit has a shortcut button and dedicated eraser at the top. Flipping the pen over to undo mistakes also felt familiar, but more importantly, it was just as smooth as inking. Of course, since it's a much larger target than the stylus's nib, the eraser isn't as precise, but the deleted marks on the screen fade in an oddly satisfying way. The one thing that took away from the scribe being a full replica of a notepad is its screen refreshing. When you erase something, it slowly fades away, and when it's just about gone, the display refreshes itself quite jarringly. 
is a small quirk, but can definitely catch you off guard when you're just starting to use the scribe. Just like pen and paper, the scribe is limited. You can't edit your notes on a phone or laptop after writing them. You can view your notebooks, sure, but because Amazon syncs them to the Kindle app as image files, you can't make changes on something other than the scribe. You can, of course, export them as PDFs to another device and use a third-party editor to tweak your notes. But Amazon software doesn't offer this function, and compared to competing handwriting and note-taking apps for iOS, Android, and Windows, the Scribe's features are very rudimentary. It doesn't even do handwriting recognition to convert your scrawl to text, not to mention indexing anything you've jotted down so that you can search your notes by looking for keywords that you wrote. Still, that doesn't mean the device isn't a delight. I love using the Scribe as a notepad for my many, many lists. You can start notebooks using various backgrounds a simple line pattern for handwriting practice, for example, or check boxes to keep track of tasks or shopping items. I spent my week so far with the scribe organizing my holiday shopping list, planning an upcoming family vacation, drawing tropical fruits that my friends haven't heard of, and re-familiarizing myself with writing the Japanese alphabet, or hiragana. I felt more productive and organized when I had the scribe with me and almost lost when I needed to jot down a thought and it wasn't by my side. For my purposes, the scribe was perfectly adequate. But for some others who might need a more sophisticated note-taking system, Amazon's device is seriously lacking. A biochemistry professor I spoke to, for example, who was keen on maybe using the scribe to annotate notes and research articles, for example, was disappointed to learn that the device didn't support colors. You can only highlight in grayscale. If you're looking to create works of art too, you won't find a complete toolkit in Amazon's app. There's just a pencil with a few thickness options or a highlighter. And unlike on an iPad, you can't move portions of your drawings around just by dragging and dropping them with the stylus. Creating a notebook isn't the only way you can doodle on the Kindle Scribe, by the way. You can also take down notes when you're reading a book, but it's not like you can just scribble directly onto the words of your eBooks. You can use the floating toolbox to create a sticky note and then draw within a designated rectangle. When you close the sticky note, a small symbol appears over the word it was attached to, but otherwise your scribbles are hidden. No annotating in the margins here. Still, maybe you should just think about the scribe primarily as a blank writing pad that replaces all your loose pieces of paper as opposed to a sophisticated notes management system. A large component of the scribe experience is the pen. The premium pen that I received costs $30 more. Both the basic and the pricier premium pens snap magnetically to the edge of the scribe and don't need to be charged, which is nice. I found the shortcut button on the premium pen a little too easy to accidentally trigger since it's placed right where my thumb or index finger would rest. I frequently had to remind myself to turn the stylus so I wouldn't press it by mistake. Compared to the Apple Pencil and Samsung's larger S Pen for tablets, Amazon's premium pen is similarly sized and reminiscent of a real pen. Anecdotally, it actually felt more comfortable than Apple's stylus possibly due to a touch of softness in his body. It's no surprise that the scribe shines as an e-reader. It may be the biggest Kindle yet, but when I was reading Blackout by Eric Flanagan, words were as crisp and legible as on the smaller entry-level Kindle that I'm used to. Of course, thanks to the larger canvas, I could see more text on one page and not have to squint. Amazon also offers large mode under display size so that those with visual impairments can read with greater ease. Other Kindle accessibility features are also available, including the voice view screen reader over Bluetooth audio, although in English only. You can also adjust the font size, font phase, line spacing, margins, and invert black and white. Basically, as an e-reader, the scribe is everything you've gotten used to on a Kindle, from the excellent library of available content down to Amazon's somewhat cumbersome interface. 
This brings me to my two biggest frustrations with the scribe. And spoiler alert, they aren't major inconveniences at all. First, I wish Amazon would update its layout to make it easier or faster to switch between notes. To go from my to-do list to my packing list, for example, I have to tap the top of the screen to invoke the navigation bar, hit the notebooks button to view my notes, and then select the list that I want. That would be bothersome on any regular touchscreen device, not to mention an e-reader that refreshes as slowly as a Kindle does. If Amazon let me view, say, a carousel of my open notes by swiping down from the bottom, perhaps, it might make jumping between notes easier. Secondly, the premium leather cover that Amazon sent with the scribe is completely atrocious. One time we kind of figured it out, but it just seems to take up a lot of space in that one configuration that kind of works. Now, the good news is you don't have to buy this case, which, by the way, adds $80 to the scribe's overall cost. And sure, the interface is slow, but at least it works as expected and is perhaps as good as it gets for an e-ink device. The best thing about black and white e-readers, though, is their longevity. Amazon says the scribe will last you weeks on a charge. And while I was concerned to see the battery level drop from 83 to 80% during one of my hiragana practice sprees, in my week with the device, it's gone down about 35%. I'd say if you weren't writing continuously for hours, you'd get more out of the scribe. But at the very least, it should easily last you two and a half weeks. As a child of the 90s, I'm enamored with the scribe. Amazon has managed to not only replicate a pen and paper experience, but has even been able to improve part of it. Some of my main issues with the scribe, particularly its lack of editing tools, are possibly solvable by software updates. And indeed, when I asked Amazon about possible handwriting recognition tools in the future, a representative said that while they can't comment on future roadmap features, they are always listening to customer feedback. So in other words, maybe if we all complain loudly enough, the company might edit. The Kindle Scribe's biggest competition is the remarkable tablet, which retails for slightly more than Amazon's device, though you can find it on sale nowadays for less. It has a slightly larger 10.3 inch screen, but comes in noticeably thinner at 4.7 millimeters or 0.18 inches thick. Remarkable offers slightly better syncing and writing software than Amazon, but it pales in comparison to the Kindle as an e-reader. Artists, designers, and serious note takers will also probably want to look elsewhere for a more sophisticated drawing and annotating solution. The iPad and Apple Pencil might be your best bet, but as a combo of an e-reader that can also serve as a basic digital notepad, the Kindle Scribe is surprisingly satisfying. For more in-depth reviews on tablets, laptops, wearables, smartphones, and more, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And until next time, keep reading and writing.